Hey y'all, N4HNH here with the Kenwood TS890S. Those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you know that I teach operating techniques, no matter what radio I'm using, and I'm up to well over 700 videos, I believe, on the channel. Some are, most are public, but some are just for the members of the Patreon support team who make all of the videos possible. So they have exclusive content. And part of their exclusive content are tutorial videos. And I usually go in order of complexity with the radio. As I'm filming this, there are 102 videos for the FTDX10, for example, and more planned. And then I've got a series for the FT710, a series for the FTDX101. So what I like to do earlier in these tutorial series is address audio. In this case, it's going to be receive audio because, well, we listen first, right? And then we will get into transmit, and I'll cover that as well in a subsequent video. So those of you who join the Patreon support team who make these videos possible will have access to this complete series. You'll have to be an S9 VIP level, that's the top tier, to have access to these videos. But this video I'll probably make public because it'll be one of the very first ones. And what I want to show you is you got to work on the receive audio a little bit out of the box. It don't sound great. Let me tell you a little story. When I first looked at the Kenwood TS-890S in 2019 when it came out, and is still currently their newest <laughs> HF base station, I wasn't really impressed with how it sounded. Now, granted, I was in the store listening through the speaker that's up here. I went ahead and got the external speaker for it, and it is better. But also, too, they had just unboxed it and put it up on the bench. And I just wasn't too impressed with it because of how it sounded on receive. That happened with this one. Now, this one I purchased for this video series. May or may not sell it later. Depends on how much I like it or not. So far, though, I, I, am, I will tell you, so far I'm liking some things. Every radio has some issues. None are perfect. But there's more more right usually than wrong, and such is the case with this one. It seems to be very well thought out. So whether I keep it or not, I don't know. But I bought the radio so that I can not be beholden to anyone. I can just be straight with you about everything I'm going to tell you about the radio in this series. I prefer to do things that way, and that's why it's so important to have the Patreon support team behind me, the private donations from other hams who want to learn and who want to help me so that I can be objective. By the way, notice that cool screensaver. It's sort of a Hall of Fame of old Kenwood radios. Look at that. Those were some fine radios. There's the TS-870. So if the screensaver kicks in, you get to see some of Kenwood's Hall of Fame. The Look at that, TS-820. All right, so if you just touch anything, though, the screen comes back. So I just touched the volume knob, just rotated a little bit. The screen comes back. All right, so let me show you how to get in there and do some receive audio. So you're just sitting at some screen. You know, it'll generally wake up on the, like a, you know, the band scope here with the waterfall. or It'll wake up somehow. There's the spectrum scope, which is my favorite. Now, if you look up here on the right-hand side, there's not a touch screen. Not a touch screen. Let me, let me zoom in. You, you touch buttons that line up with different things. So the menu can change according to context, right? Same thing across the bottom here with these function keys. Well, notice this one here, RXEQ U1. There's a TXEQ as well. I'm going to tap the RXEQ, and you'll see I turned it off. And if you hear somebody, if you listen without it, okay. here, let's listen to these guys. Well, maybe they're finished. No, the there we go. The Alright, I'm going to turn that EQ on. So already you can tell yeah, all that brittle high frequency stuff went away. Let me turn it back off. Maryland. Yep. Let's see, do I have it? Right, you see that? So one of the things you can do to help your receiver out is yeah. cut okay. out frequency now, ranges that you, you don't need to hear. Remember, we're occupying three kilohertz of sideband spectrum. So we don't need to be hearing three and a half, four, five, six, all that ultra high 
it's uncomfortable. Now, how do you adjust yeah, this? Well, long press, and, see what it says about him. and you will see the menu pop up. Let me move the camera over a little bit so you can see. And you have, uh, by the way, look look over here. It lit up this light for the multi knob, letting you know, hey, that you can use the multi knob. See that? Or you can use these up and down arrow here. Okay, and look at this, AD, adjust, copy, read, save. All right, so I'm going to show you, I'm just going to use the multi-knob to do this. High boost, one, high boost, two, format, pass, bass boost, one, bass boost, two. These all come in the radio. There's flat, and then you have three user menus. You can do it your own way and save it in there. So now, how do you do it? You tap adjust the, the function key below the ADJ. That's F4. And there is my curve for receive. So I'm, I'm boosting 300 hertz, which is 0.3. I'm boosting it by 3 dB. If you look over on the right hand side, you've got a dB scale. Let me turn that down. I'm boosting 300 hertz by 3 dB. And then I'm boosting 600 hertz. A little bit. Oh, and how do you adjust these? Well, use the arrow keys to move over to whichever one you want to adjust. And then you use the multi knob or plus minus to adjust these. I find the multi knob is easier. So uh, boosting 600 by, which is 0.6, okay? 0.6 kilohertz, so I'm 600 hertz. I'm one click below that little, that line. I'm one click below being equal to the 300 hertz setting. So then we move over to 900 hertz. I'm not boosting it. If you look over to the right, I'm on zero. Same thing at 1.2 kilohertz, which is 1200 hertz, right? We know how to move those, the decimal point, right, from taking our test. But at 1.5, I've dropped it by 6 dB. At 1.8, I've dropped it even more, probably somewhere in the uh, let's see, I don't know, six or eight. Let me see, I'll tell you this. I am one, two clicks below the line or one click above the next line down, which is minus six dB. All right, and then really knocking it down at 2.1, I'm going, I'm knocking it down by minus 12, 12 dB. At 2.4, I'm knocking it down by 18. And after that, I dropped them all the way down, 24 dB minus. Why? Well, I've got a 2.7 kilohertz roofing filter for receive anyway. And yeah, there's always a little spillover from a roofing filter. It was kind of cool that Kenwood did that because they know there's going to be a little spillover. So with a 2.7 K, probably going to hear, you know, up to about 3 K ish, but it'll be attenuated because the filter is going to, you know, it's going to start cutting it off. It'll slope it off. There's no need to amplify because that's basically what the CQ is doing. You're either amplifying or cutting. There's no need to amplify those frequencies. I'm not going to listen to them. Even if I could boost this enough to make it sneak through, let's say 3K, it's just going to add hiss. 2.7K is going to add hiss. So even though I'm using a 2.7 filter, I've knocked 2.7 all the way down. I'm only allowing a little bit of 2.4. That's why all that high pitched hiss, that brittleness went away when I engaged the EQ. So there you go. That's my receive EQ curve. It can vary with your hearing. Okay. You may need different, you may need more of the highs. As we get older, we begin to lose our high frequency hearing. So you may very well find it necessary to uh, boost the highs a little more than I did. Now, the, the low end, adding the 300 hertz and the 600 hertz, that gives their voice a little more depth, you know, makes them sound, uh, as we some would say, fuller, a fuller voice. So there you go. That's the Receive EQ on the Kenwood TS-890S, the way N4H and H likes to hear. But that's my ears, not your ears. This may give you a good starting point, and then you can tweak to your delight.